Um, at the same time as the uh, <coughs> school uh, was uh, in process of developing, of course, the uh, company also developed a touring company. Yeah. Uh, which gradually grew throughout southern Ontario, Ontario until it was traveling quite a distance. Yeah. Um, what do you recall? Did you tour with the yes, touring I company did. at all? Yes, I did. Can you share us yeah. some recollections of tours? Yeah, well, I, um, on one level, it was exciting. It was fun. Um, uh, we, we, go, we go into schools where the, the kids had never seen a Shakespeare play. The teachers hadn't either, by the way. And they loved it. Uh, they they really enjoyed it, uh, uh, and, and uh, I know I know that um, some people would say, well, how can you expect these teenagers to understand Shakespeare? It's a four hundred year old language; you, uh, you can't expect it. But they may not have understood every single word, but they sure knew what was going on, and they responded to the, all the all the the, the drama in, and loved it. So mm -hmm. uh, we we had a very positive reaction. Uh, and, um, and and the, the the girls like to scream and yell for the the young guys in the in the plays, uh, so it was a, a fun experience, I think. But on another level, I, I found uh, found it difficult because um, I used to like to play a lot of sport, and uh, and the fall, which is where the the touring would would occur, uh, would be in football season, and and I you know I I played football and. And um, you know, in football, you have to have different plays, and they're all numbered, and and uh, they're written down on on scraps of paper. Uh, the, the X's are one side, and the and the and the zeros are on the other, and and with lines are, are drawn to where you're supposed to, who you're supposed to block in that. And I remember still having nightmares for years because I I would I I, I couldn't go to the practice because, uh, but they let me play the game, and um, and I'd be studying these pieces of paper all the time before the game, not knowing who I was supposed to block. So I, um, two times out of three, I'd end up blocking the wrong player. <laughs> and then I have these nightmares about trying to learn, learn it up quickly enough to, to play a game. <laughs> the, um, uh, the touring companies um, were uh, typically, the performances were typically not during school hours, I understand. I guess not. Evenings? I guess not. Yeah, maybe they're in the evening. Yeah, perhaps yeah. so. Yeah. And if I remember correctly, also the understanding uh, was that there would be a sixty-forty split between uh, the company and uh, the school, which would be uh, on the revenue. Of, yeah. In charge of the gate. Yeah. That would yeah. be uh, that would be dividing. I think uh, dividing so. Revenues. Um, were uh, 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 did the company then reimburse performers? Yeah. Yeah, but the, by that time everybody was being paid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, were the uh, uh, touring companies at all scaled down in order to make that yes. affordable? Yeah, that's right. There, there are dual roles, and uh, there are lots of Walter Plinges. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> perhaps you might, for the record, perhaps you might explain Walter Plinge. Um, <laughs> well, as a pseudonym, as a pseudonym that comes out of the, the English the, uh, theatrical tradition, where where one person, one actor plays more than one role. But they didn't want to admit that, um, so they gave they gave uh, one of the uh, the roles um, the name of Walter Plinge. So Walter Plinge would always come on the program, and but really be another actor. <laughs> um. And uh, so were there, um, amongst the performers in the regular festival, was there occasionally um, anxiety about whether or not one would be invited to join the touring company? Uh, I think so, yeah. yeah. I, I, think there, I think there was great desire to keep going on the part of actors. Uh, they wanted to be invited to play roles, and, and um, I'm sure they had... Uh, their favorite roles in mind, uh, they would like to be asked to play their roles. There would be some disappointment where, mm -hmm. where other people got the role. After uh, Prophet Seeley's death, uh, uh, your parents were informed that uh, Trinity College Quadrangle would no longer be available to the Earl Grey Shakespearean mm. Festival. And so your father embarked on a search for new venues. Yeah. For the festival, can yeah. we talk a little bit about that? Do you recall? Yeah, that was a very sad period. 
a very sad period. Um, uh, audiences had been declining mm -hmm. uh, in the la last year, pr particularly of the of the festival. And they, they declined to a very low level, and it was causing a lot of angst on the part of, of my parents. And on, I have to say, and me too, because I would walk around and and I'd see the situation. And I was old enough by that time to be affected, and and I'm sure my sisters were too. So it was a very sad period for the whole family to see this decline. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, when, when the, the gate was shut, uh, it, uh, in a way, uh, I don't know if it was a blessing in disguise or not, because uh, I'm not sure how much longer the festival would have lasted under those conditions, even if Seeley had been a alive. But, well, but, but the foundation had been established. It had been established and, and yeah, but the audiences were declining. That, that was the problem, uh, basically. Uh, there could have been a turnaround. Mm -hmm. uh, There's always a possibility. I, I wouldn't have ruled it out. But um, uh, certainly uh, that, that's, that's academic anyway because um, uh, the gates were shut and uh, they needed to find a, another place. They wanted to continue. They felt they had something to offer. And, uh, and that they would, have, they would have been received well. And uh, they, they went all over uh, Toronto looking for a place. I mean, they, I, I went with them on some locations. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I, I remember being a little bit surprised at, at the uh, um, almost, uh, it, some of the places they looked at didn't look terribly good, for, to me at least, uh, as a, a theatrical uh, venue, but of course, they may have rejected them anyway, but they they put a lot of effort into finding another place. And as as you point out in your work, uh, uh, you know they 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 look to parks and that sort of thing. But uh, they almost got there, but uh, didn't make it. And ultimately, uh, it became clear to them that um, they couldn't find a place. So that's when they went back to England. Well, I think it was um, uh, at that point too that I suppose the um uh, uneasiness of the relations between your parents, particularly your mother, and city council, uh, may have um, uh, may have sort of tipped the scales um, of the future of the festival. I um, uh, um, my research turns up a couple of occasions, a report of a couple of meetings that your father had with Toronto City Council, mm. in which um, the councillors seemed to be enthusiastic mm. about the entire project of creating. Uh, an amphitheater somewhere where um, <coughs> which could be the permanent home of the festival as well as alternative forms of performance mm. uh, and uh, for some time as you understand there was a certain amount of hope that that could be done in time for there to be a 1959 iteration mm. of the Earl Grey Shakespearean Festival mm. alas that turned out not to be the case as uh, uh, also the um, a projected um, uh, arrangement with Casaloma uh, yeah. also fell through. Yeah. And um, it was at the conclusion of that period, I think, that your father, um, uh, just before his return to England in 1960, uh, that your father gave a, um, a particularly uh, resigned interview to mm. Herbert Whitaker, mm -hmm. um, in, which, uh, uh, in which he seems to... Um, uh, in, a, in to some degree to to uh, change his mind about the um, uh, the goal of establishing a um, a continental style Canadian uh, Shakespearean theater uh, claiming that Canadian audiences even British audiences don't really like theater don't really want it yeah. Um, I can't help feeling personally that your father is speaking radically out of character there. What do no, you think I don't that? think he was. No? Um, I mean, I know it, it sounds like uh, a bitterness there that he's, he's resigned to uh, to a, a sense of, re of rejection. But but that's that's what he he al he always I remember him always saying things of that nature that Anglo Saxons don't like the theater. Um, uh, that much. Even in England, um, he, he would say that the theatre has always had trouble getting enough support uh, from audiences and, and from financiers because uh, there is no great and abiding love for the theatre among Anglo-Saxon people. And uh, he applied the same observation to Canadian people. 
but he might have multiplied it by five. <laughs> so uh, I, uh, the context may have, may have, uh, and uh, obviously he was um, he was saddened, uh, uh, and and I suppose not without a, a touch of bitterness. But but he, he was not a bitter man by nature at all. I mean he he oh. would he would would be resigned to mm -hmm. to the the situation. He didn't like it. Obviously he felt sad about it. But uh, there was not that um, the, the prickliness that that often comes with bitterness. He he doesn't he wasn't that man's uh, that type of man. So I would not interpret that remark in that fashion at all because good. he's made it so many times to his family in the past. Good. That's good to hear. Um, after his return <coughs> to, uh, to England uh, with your mother, your mother continued her uh, touring uh, mm. with her one-woman show of yeah. uh, great uh, female roles from Shakespeare. Your father remained... I think also that. with the piano. She, she played the piano as also, well. Also playing? Yeah, yeah she play, she play a piece that she thinks uh, is, is cognate with with the, the lines of Shakespeare. Oh, <clears throat> and, and uh, she she play that piece, and then um, um, what? Well, she go away and come back in a costume and and uh, make the speech, and then, uh, and then alternate. Yeah, your father in the uh, in the meantime maintained uh, relations with the Hearts and Letters Club. Yeah, and uh, in the early 1970s, the Earl Grey. Award was established by um, the union that he helped to found, yeah. uh, ACTRA, um, and uh, he was even invited back from England to present it on yeah. two occasions. Do you have uh, recollections of uh, what that meant uh, for your father? Oh, I think it meant a great deal. Uh, it meant a great deal. I, um, I mean, Canada occupied a very, very substantial part of his life. Not in not only in terms of years, but uh, in terms of impact on him. I, I, I think he, uh, he, he, did, he did end up feeling an affinity for, uh, for Canada and for, for what he was doing there. I, I think he really did believe that he was contributing uh, an important element to, to a culture, which happened to be a Canadian culture. He was there by happenstance, not out of choice, but, but he, uh, he um, felt really committed to to his theatrical enterprise here, and, he, and I think he was very touched by by the um, um, recognition that he got. Uh, in, in a way, psychology was very hard for my parents. Um, uh, they, they had put all this effort. They were total pioneers. I mean, real pioneers. There was nothing to do with Shakespeare before they came, virtually. And they had huge obstacles to overcome. They had no capital at all, zero capital. They they had to make their own the scenery in the basement. They they couldn't even afford proper glue, so they they had to get uh, lumps of, of glue material and boil it up in boiling water to make the glue to to put on the the flats. I mean that's how basic things were. And uh, they had all these difficulties that you've been mentioning, and I have too, about the tensions and lack of support, uh, even antagonisms. Uh, they had a, uh, the competition with, with Stratford, which ultimately worked out. They had, they had some real difficulties, but they soldiered on because they believed in what they were doing. They could have done something else, uh, but they chose to, to do this. So the real pioneers, and they must have felt that they were underappreciated. Uh, there, and uh, so when they went back to to England, they would have had a certain feeling of gang. So that when this award came by, it it it, it almost uh, was like a like a cleansing shower to them. What, uh, one final question then: Was your father's? Uh, did your father f ultimately feel satisfied with the uh, reward of all his efforts? I wouldn't have thought so. No. no. I think he, he felt... There was still some disappointment right to the very end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's been a very, very great pleasure talking to you. We've mm -hmm. been talking with Anthony Gray, the son of Earl Gray and Mary Godwin, the founders of Canada's first ongoing Shakespearean festival, the Earl Gray Shakespearean Festival.